Hello everybody! Today, I'm going to be doing a video on these two Optiplex GX520s. And this is going to be more of a rant than a video. I will say that because these things are not all that great. Anyways, starting off, we're going to go over the outside of the GX520. It seems we're right on the outside. On the top you have a blank for a CD option. The floppy drive, which is a small floppy drive, not a large one. Don't know why they chose that. Two USB ports, headphone and microphone power button. And the Dell logo, as well as the fan grill. And the detail stickers. On the top we have our uh, Dell markings, service tag, express service code, the... Um, crap, what do you call it? The OEM logo and the uh, case handle. On the back, just do it up, we have our power supply, which is non-switching, our audio, the um, Ethernet port, and six USB ports, which is a surprise, these are all USB 2, VGA out, which is, that thing's loose, uh, serial port, parallel port, serial port's here, another serial port, and a PS2 mouse port. This is obviously missing a blank, so ugh, whatever. Now, let's get on to the part where I rant. The case obviously comes off with the handle, and it's nice and easy, as with most Dells. So, that's not a problem. Um, but, uh, once you get into the internals, the problems start immediately. This is the cooler, right here. It cools a 2.8 GHz Celeron D. Now, oh boy, let's just put this down right now. This fan sucks in air, pushes it over the hot chip and onto the hard drive. <sighs> Not a good design choice. Not a good design choice. Um, the, I'm, I'm honestly astounded the hard drives in these have not failed because after like whatever how many years of having constant heat blown onto their hard drive, that's not good. Um, the power supply is just as not intuitive as the uh, cooling design is. Instead of being like every other power supply in the universe that sucks air out of the case, out of the back, no. We had to be a rebel, we had to suck the air into the case. So it's spitting the hot air into the case and again onto the hard drive. The power supplies in these things are 220 watts and they get hot. Literally hot. I'm not exaggerating. If, if you went in to touch these things under load, you would probably burn yourself. They're that hot. And in, I'm sure it's this one. The power supply was so chock full of dust that I had to clean it out. And whenever I would do a load test on the thing, the power supply would get so hot, the fan would max out, and it wouldn't cool down for 20 minutes. I'm honestly, this is a fire hazard. Having a freaking power supply like that, that's a fire hazard. And again, just more stress for the hard drive. Um, now, the hard drive is easier to remove. You just pull up on these two clips and it's out and you just remove the cables super duper easy i'm not going to take off the cables there's the north bridge which is covered by a tiny heat sink a bunch of capacitors to feed the chip the south bridge the cmos battery and the smsc sound chip which you can see down there as well as the broadcom ethernet up here so that's all right. That's not great, but you know what are you gonna do? And this North Bridge, this is a um, this is a Prescott era North Bridge. So these things get really hot. So having that directly under the hard drive, it's like right there on the hard drive. Just for reference, actually no, it's right there. I lied. That's not good. That's right on the freaking uh, right under the electronics. It's not great. Okay, now let's get on to the optical bay and the floppy drive. They have an optional CD-ROM drive in this, and they had to include a floppy. 
Why? Look, why? This thing is tiny. And in the era that it was built, floppy disks were pretty much dead. The only reason you would ever need to use one is for backwards compatibility. And guess what? You can just as easily use a USB floppy drive. The addition of this floppy drive makes literally no sense. The cable is a bus power cable. It's flimsy. The connector down here on one of the ones of the four that I originally had snapped off when I tried to remove it. What's the point? If you're going to make a flimsy cable, why the hell would you install it in the first place? What? And with the, with the space that this would have saved if it had not been there, you probably could have put the hard drive right there, and then all of these like ventilation problems would be gone. And what they could have done instead is put a much needed blower here, or even made a um, like a, a duct to go across to the vent, and then have the power supply suck out. But no, we can't do that. And down here with this, look at this. This is crap. This is just like a parallel ATA cable that they cut down to size and slapped two connectors on the end of. And they're just as flimsy as the other cable. And the and another one of the ones, the cable just broke right off and I was left with a useless length of parallel cable. It's ridiculous. And if, if we're honest, just the design of this thing in general is just terrible. And the hardware choices too, it's just, it's just boggles the mind why they even made this. They would have got more performance and more, like, they would have, they would have, it would have been more efficient to use a single core Athlon. Because it would have been better performing. It would have put off less heat. And it would have just been better than using a single core Celeron D. It's just silly that they used a Celeron D in this thing. Like, the... Th this is this is an ultra small form factor computer, so that's that's that. But look, if if this was the small form factor or uh, regular ATX form factor, it would have been a lot better. But you know, couldn't have done that. We had to make it a ultra small form factor. And oh boy, the front panel, the vent sucks up dust and keeps it there so you know you're starving the cpu of air great and then to remove the front panel you basically have to break it off in order to get the dust out so what's the what's the point dude come on why would you put this here they should have just kept this vent part right here and then gotten rid of the uh the other opposing vent holes inside the case because that's causing problems Thankfully, though, the um, optical and floppy drive stuff is easy to remove. You just, here, I'll show you again because I didn't have the camera focused on it. You lift up the lever and pull back, and it's out. But, like, really, <laughs> the the space that they could have, they could have just used this for the hard drive. Like, really, let me take the cables off of this hard drive and I'll show you what I mean. Of course, without this bracket on there, it'd be a little smaller, but look, they could have easily put that in there. I mean, sure, they would have had to make the case a little longer, probably, but they could have done it, and it would have gotten, it would have alleviated so so much heat. It, <laughs> it's just ridiculous how they designed this thing. But, you know... It's it's just another thing that Dell's done. It's ridiculous. And the the CD the CD ROM drive, this is the proprietary mini IDE that they use for it. It's obviously a bus powered deal, so whatever, you're getting what you pay for, I guess. But dude, the things cost like twenty bucks on eBay. Twenty bucks for a laptop grade C D ROM drive is just ridiculous. And they had to have been more as an optional add-on back in the day. I'm sure of that. There's no way they couldn't have been. So, dude, what you've done here is you've basically just totally, like, totally effed over your consumers, basically, with this piece. Um, and you can see down here where they would have had SATA cables. 
more SATA ports, which would have been greatly appreciated, but they didn't put those in. Which is just... I can understand it, but I don't really. I really don't understand the design choices here. The, and one more thing, just to nitpick about. There's a PCI expansion slot, which is all fine and dandy, but its proximity to the case means that if it moves even a little bit, you have a short circuit, and that's not good. Um, that would probably blow up this power supply, if we're completely honest, because whatever circuit protection this might have, is going to be totally negated by the fact that it gets so hot, it would probably just catch fire anyway. So, uh, Dell, please. I, I, I'm, I'm sure they've learned their mistake by this point in their life. Okay, sorry about that. Um, as I was saying, they've probably learned the mistake at this point in their life, but what they, they, they should have learned it before they made this, that this thing is a piece of crap. But anyway, Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you later.